Hi everyone, Jake here from the Owings Mills branch of the Baltimore County Public Library, and I am bringing you another Quarantine Media Minute. With the weather getting colder and leaves changing color and beginning to fall, it's the perfect time to wrap yourself up in a warm blanket, grab a nice cup of hot chocolate, and get your pants scared off. That's right, it is horror movie, horror game, and horror book season, my favorite time of the year. And I'm going to tell you about a variety of different games, movies, and books that you can get through the Baltimore County Public Library. First up, if you're looking for a truly horrific and suspenseful video game, I cannot recommend Resident Evil 7 enough. Resident Evil 7 is part of the longtime Resident Evil franchise. However, it's one of the first truly scary Resident Evil games to come out in many years. You play as the main character who was contacted by his wife who suddenly went missing a year ago. And she in this video is pleading for you to come and rescue her from this mysterious place called the Baker Estate, which is an abandoned plantation. In the Baker Estate, when you arrive there, it looks completely abandoned. As you explore around, you slowly find out that the family is still there and they are not happy. After a horrific encounter with them getting captured and breaking free, um, the rest of the game is filled with tense exploration of this house, gaining different weapons and abilities, and fighting mutated monsters, zombies, and creatures as you try to save your wife. Um, this has some truly terrifying moments that would fit into any of the best horror movies around and some really great action-packed moments as well. My adrenaline pumps the whole time I'm playing this game. It's not for the weak of heart, but if you're looking for an amazing horror action experience, Resident Evil 7 is definitely worth trying. We have it available for checkout on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. If you're looking for a video game that isn't quite as terrifying as Resident Evil 7, but still has some great horror elements to it, I would suggest Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is a 2D action-adventure game that is very similar to the Castlevania series that was really popular back in the day. Um, in Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, you are playing as Miriam. Miriam is a being who can defeat monsters and then pull their abilities into herself to use to have an easier time defeating future monsters or explore more of the castle and area that she's in. Um, even though it's not filled with tense jump scares like Resident Evil, Bloodstained has really huge gothic castles and buildings that you're exploring. The aesthetic is very much so fitting in the horror genre. So if you really like that aesthetic, but don't want to be constantly on the edge of your seat, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is worth giving a try. It's available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch through the library. Moving into some books to try, one of my favorite horror manga series is Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul follows the experiences of Ken Kaneki, and Ken early in the series gets a horrific accident and must have an organ transplant. The only problem is he finds out that this organ came from a ghoul, which is a being that can feed only on other human beings by eating them. Once this organ transplant happens, it transforms Ken into a partial ghoul himself, forcing him to discover what it means to be a ghoul and how is he going to survive when he can only eat fellow humans. It's not so much a scary series as it is a grim and a grim series that explores what it means to be human, what you're willing to do for survival. The manga is available through the library as is the anime, which is available on Blu-ray. If you're looking for something a little bit lighter but that has some of that traditional you know, slasher horror to it, I would suggest Scream by Wes Craven. Scream is a classic of the horror genre. It came out in the 1990s and follows Sidney Prescott. Sidney is a high schooler who has a tragic backstory, and when a killer is on the loose suddenly attacking various people throughout her high school, her tragic history leaves her suspecting her friends, her family, and everyone around her. 
Um, Scream has some great tense and suspenseful moments, but one of the most enjoyable things is how self-referential it is. It's constantly referencing other horror films and genres and series. And one of my favorite scenes involves a character named Randy, who is a horror buff and is yelling at the TV screen, as you do when you're watching horror movies, and suggesting things to the character on the screen. The best part though is, is that in the background, the things that he is suggesting to her are about to happen to him as well. It works really well. It's a nice combination. The whole movie is a nice combination of dark humor and suspenseful, tense, you know, horror moments. If you haven't given Scream a try, I highly recommend it. It's available on DVD through the Baltimore County Library. A book I've recently read called We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix is another kind of new horror experience for me. It takes the idea, what if a rock band that became popular really did sell their souls to rock and roll? A little cheesy, but that fits for Grady Hendrix as many of his books take sort of a silly idea and then run with it. The main character, Chris Pulaski, was in the up and coming heavy metal band, Dirt Work. They were about to have their big breakthrough when their lead singer, Terry Hunt, suddenly leaves the band, forms his own band, Coffin, and becomes one of the most famous musicians of all time. Ten years later, Chris is reasonably upset, annoyed, but also just frustrated in her dead-end job. But she slowly starts to discover that maybe Chris's experiences and the rest of Dirt were wasn't merely just a chance encounter, but maybe Terry sold his and their souls to some other being for fame. It's a fun read that takes a lot of references to heavy metal and rock bands and sort of just incorporates them into the story, but there's some really, really tense moments, including one where Chris is crawling through an underground tunnel filled with creatures grasping and clawing at her as she's trying to escape from I don't want to spoil it, but in a location she needs to escape from. Um, it, it's available both physically and through Overdrive through the Baltimore County Library. And finally, I have a newer movie for you. It's called The Lodge. The Lodge follows a family that, after a tragic incident, is about to have their first Christmas together. The father and his two children are going to go to the lodge that they always went to as a family, and he is bringing his new girlfriend, Grace. Grace is not really liked by the kids for reasons that the movie explores, um, but one of the main things they're uncomfortable with is Grace was once a part of a cult. Um, now, Grace has told her father, and her father believes her that that is in her past, but the kids don't believe her. When the father suddenly has to leave the lodge, to go deal with some work things, leaving both the kids and Grace isolated in this lodge, strange things start to happen and Grace's past starts getting pulled into a number of very suspenseful and scary moments. Um, the lodge is a much more of a suspenseful kind of psychological thriller than it is supernatural horror, but it is a lot of fun and the ending kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time. The Lodge is available on DVD through the Baltimore County Public Library today. And those are my horror picks for the fall. Hopefully you enjoy some of these and stay tuned for our next Quarantine Media Minute in November. Thank you.